Hello, friends. I am sitting in front of some huge stacks of books because today I want to talk about how I'm building my classroom library on a budget. Like I have mentioned before, the residency first year is kind of an abbreviated pay for a teacher. So it's, it's quite a strict budget, but I really want to have a, a classroom library. It's what I've looked honestly most forward to since I kind of was toying with the idea of teaching because I love to read and I grew up reading and I want to make sure that all my students get the opportunity to read as much as they want about anything they want. So I've started slowly but surely building my classroom library. Now, of course, I don't know what grade I'm going to be teaching next year, but I do know that at the school I'm at right now and in the district that I'm in, a lot of the students are very low reading comprehension, reading level. So I knew it's important to have books that lean more toward the lower level readers. But at the same time, we do have students that are high, so I want to have a range of doing my best. And so far, I think I've only spent 25 bucks to get all of these, and I'm gonna show you how. So the first thing, look at what you already have. I had this, oh my gosh, almost had a, a Leaning Tower Pisa situation. I've had this stack of books sitting in my house um, one day for my own children, just books that I had found that I liked that I wanted to get. So I had these around. I'll put these in my classroom library or bring them in for certain read alouds. Obviously, like this is definitely more fall, October themed, things like that. So that's your first place because it's totally free. The second piece of advice I have and I'm gonna go through all these books and kind of show you what I've gotten to, to see kind of what you can do. The second, and this requires definitely eating your pride and saying like, I am struggling and I need help. All of these books have been gifted to me since I started out on my teaching journey. So a really good selection of books. I also wanna say, some of the books that have been gifted to me are new, but some of them are from like discount bookstores and people were like, hey, I was at the store and I thought of you. My mom brought these three books when she visited and they're three for $3 at a discount bookstore. I do not need all full price books, y'all. Um, some of these were also from like half price books or just books my friends had laying around their houses. Um, and then I, have books that like my friends read when they were really little. So on the back of this, my friend Morgan gave me this book and this was a book that she read when she was in fifth grade. There's a lot of history in these pages and I think that's important. And then lastly, of course, are, you know, new books um, that are on my Amazon wish list that my friends send me um, and family. It's Truly the most moving packages that I get. I absolutely love them. And just got some cute little new books. Um, my Amazon wish list is listed below if you want ideas for your own classroom. I've done a lot of research on, um, you know, books that I want in my classroom. And before I dive into the third and I think probably most cost effective place to get books, I also want to talk about how I'm choosing the books that I'm getting because I do believe in quality over quantity. I would rather have, you know, 25 books that are really exceptional for my students than 150 books, but they don't want to read any of them or they're not beneficial to their lives. So a couple of themes that I look for when I am either putting books on my Amazon wish list or looking at books that I want. There's kind of three things I look for. One, I look for interesting nonfiction because there's this connotation, especially with the students at my school, that nonfiction is very boring. It's old dead people or things that don't matter, things that don't impact them. And so I really want to find interesting nonfiction books. This is about um, Sojourner Truth, and this is a nonfiction book, but it's interesting. It's painted well. Um, 
we have like animal non nonfiction books. This stack is just not, it's just not well, not well. Animal books that are full of beautiful, colorful pictures that are engaging for students. Um, she persisted. This is nonfiction, um, but it's portrayed in a way that looks like any old picture book. Super important. So nonfiction is one of the things. The next thing I look for are social emotional learning through books. So a lot of my students don't have social emotional resources or don't have great examples of socially emotionally conscious role models in their lives. So I try and find books that talk about maybe like feelings they might be having or struggles they might be having that they can connect with and build on those skills because they see it in what they're consuming. So that's why I got Gustavo the Shy Ghost. It's about making friends and staying true to yourself and it is in a really cute way so they can learn about that through a tiny little ghost. Um, what do you do with an idea? Talks about perseverance, following your dreams, all of these things. Um, oh, where's my other example? Hold, please. Mm. Basketball buddies. So this is a leveled reader that was a gift and it's about like, what if you have a nickname that you don't like and how do you tell the people around you what your boundaries are? And that's super important for my students because they, they don't have the words and the tools yet to tell us what they need a lot of times or what they're feeling. And this is a great book to model what that looks like. The third and I think most important thing that I look for when I'm getting books from anywhere is I want the books to look and sound like my students. There are so many different ways that I, as a white teacher, need to be aware and constantly addressing the fact that my students do not look like me, and I grew up very different than they did. And one of the ways that I try to make sure that they feel really seen and really included in our classroom environment is by choosing stories that highlight men and women of color, children of color, um, stories that take place in neighborhoods that look like theirs or that talk about religions that are theirs. Really trying to ensure, oh, who's joking? Really trying to. I'm really trying to ensure that they feel like our classroom is a safe space for them. And I do that in a couple of ways. These are two really good examples. Again, she persisted. Already on the cover, it's a female focused book. So strong women, that's something I really wanna drive home for especially my young girls. But also there's three girls on here that look very different in terms of skin color. This is a great book. I picked it up from Target. Um, actually, my mom picked it up from Target when I was with her. And it's our favorite day of the year, and it talks about different holidays from different cultures and religions. And the artwork is beautiful and really ties into each of the cultures that are represented in this book. And it has boys, and it has girls, and it has just lots of different variation in skin tone, lots of different variation in hair and hair texture and hair color and all those things that I really try to focus on. And then books like this, books that are all about children of color, just about stories of their lives. It's nothing fancy. It's not about race. It's not necessarily like diving into differences in cultures. Like this one talks a lot about how do you interact with people who are in a different culture than you? How do you understand them and learn from them? This just is a story about black children. I think both are important and I try really hard to make sure that the books that I get are about people of color, role models of color. This is another great example. Obviously we, we talk about Martin Luther King Day throughout the year, but just having a book that highlights a really strong, black figure in history 
and it's nonfiction, so you get to actually see pictures of like what was going on in this time. All really great. And now I know you've all been waiting for my third tip for how to get books on a budget. Ooh. All of these books together were $1.80. It's my proudest achievement in life uh, because I found near me a Goodwill outlet. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, aren't they all Goodwill outlets? You know they're not. There's Goodwill stores and there's Goodwill outlets. And Goodwill outlets, you walk in and it is just binned full of things. There's no organization. It's just bins of stuff. And it's all purchased by the pound or by inches. And books are by inches. So you stack all the books that you want to buy up and they put a ruler next to it and it's 30 cents for every inch of books. A dollar eighty. And I will say, there are some absolutely exceptional things if you're willing to spend the time going to discount stores, really diving into those book bins. Like, there are so many books that you can tell have rarely, if ever, been opened. You know, books even, what I love is like, there's a bunch of level readers in here, like actually level readers from level reader kits, so like National Geographic Kids, um, Scholastic Readers, Step Into Reading, I Can Read, I Can Read, Hello Reader. Like there are actual level readers. There are great children's chapter books, which I have found are the hardest to find for cheap because it kind of like gets to the point where people keep their books or they don't outgrow them. And But like, this is Star Wars. I don't think it's ever been opened. It's got great pictures. It's a great chapter book, especially for my higher kids. Um, this is Judy Moody's brother. Like, non-fiction kids chapter books. Ugh. I was beside myself. I was so happy. So, my three places that I am starting my classroom library for cheap are gifts, which I am eternally grateful for, stuff I already have around the house, and then looking at Goodwill Outlet and discount stores. I specifically recommend Goodwill Outlet because I think it's the best deal. You do have to spend some time going through the bins, but it is totally worth it. And we are about like getting close to halfway through the school year. And so this is where I'm at halfway through the school year. I probably won't go back to Goodwill Outlet before the end of the year. So I'm going to flip the camera around and really quickly show you all the books that I have gotten for my classroom library. Feel free to take any of them as ideas. I'm really excited about all of them. And I'm sure this summer there will be a video detailing how I'm organizing them. Um, is it going to be by theme, by level? I just haven't decided. All right, leave me your favorite tips and tricks below for finding budget books. Um, leave a comment with any videos you want to see. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. As always, if you're a teacher and have advice for me, I would love it and drink it up. So um, thank you all for watching and let's dive into the library. I Survived, True Stories, Nature Attacks, Shoeless Joe and Me, Stink, The Incredible Shrinking Kid, Star Wars, Smugglers Run, Hello USA, Louisiana, Bats, Yuck in the Muck, The Surprise Party, Chicken in Mittens, Biscuit and the Lost Teddy Bear, I Have a Cold, Kitty Corner, Callie, Rainbow Magic, The Dance Fairies, Jessica the Jazz Fairy, How Do You Stay Well, Sharks, Goggles, Whales and Dolphins, Hello Christmas, Furry Wild Animals, Whoops, 
toes are to tickle, night house, bright house, the hubbub above, chicken bedtime is really early, Martin's dream day, basketball buddies, Sojourner Truth's step stomp stride, Flat Stanley's worldwide adventures, Finders Keepers for Franklin, The Merry Christmas Mystery, Biscuits Valentine's Day, Destination Moon, Liberty Voice, The Story of Ruby Bridges, What is the World Made of, You Are My Wonders, Our Class is a Family, We Are Still Here, Our Favorite Day of the Year, She Persisted, what do you do with an idea? Gustavo the Shy Ghost, The Lorax.